Today I'm going to compare the Soda Beams Carbon 6 mast, which is this white one on the top, to the brand new Explorer mast, uh, commonly referred to by Mike as the K8 MRD POTA mast. And he, this was his brainchild, really. He was like, hey, take this and make it more sturdy. And he showed him a Spider Beams mast, and he's like, take this and break it down smaller this direction. This is 16 inches right here. 16 inches collapsed and 20 feet tall. This one right here is actually a little bit shorter. It doesn't say how tall it is, but if you look right here, sitting on the table. So the Soda Beams Carbon 6 is actually a little bit shorter right there. Now I'm gonna show you what they look like broken down and what the tops of each one looks like. But first, I open them up and set them up here. You can see this is the Carbon 6 right here. And it goes all the way up. That's my top of my two-story house there. And that top is so flimsy, it doesn't really like to lean up there. And then this is the carbon six, and that's where it goes. So it is actually taller. Let me grab both of them here. And hopefully, it's maybe, I don't know, a foot taller? Maybe not that much. Let's set it down on the ground. Set both of them against the house. This is what they look like. Fully extended. This is the end of the carbon six here from soda beams and you've got a whole other section that's pretty much the the second section right there on the explorer mast yeah maybe a foot but look at the difference in width and thickness of those two the carbon six is definitely thinner and more lightweight than the explorer mast the explorer mast has this lid in the top of it that comes off like this and has a hole in it right there that grabs the top of the Explorer mast because the top of the Explorer mast has a loop in it, a, a ring, basically a ring terminal. And it fits nicely in here. It doesn't really connect. It's just small enough. The hole in the, in the lid is small enough to grab that when it's all collapsed like that. So when you pull this out gently, it'll pull the top section out with it. And this top section right here is much thicker and sturdier. I'm trying to bend it right there than the top section in the soda beams mast. So let's put that one down. Now the soda beams mast right here, it has just a regular lid. So you have to dump this out by itself. And then it does have this little string on top of the soda beams mast. It looks like it's heat shrinked on there, but <laughs> this is the top section of the soda beams mast right there. So that's not that's not holding anything. You QRP guys are probably fine with that. I mean, you know, if you're hanging up a really, really lightweight antenna, that's probably fine. But if you're going to hang up like a, I don't know, say a packed in 100, 100 watt in-fed half wave antenna of something 40 meters, then that's going to be much less sturdy than the Explorer mast here. Now, there's nothing in the world wrong with this soda beams mast. I've used this several times on POTA activations and up until this was designed and produced this one was pretty much the smallest portable most portable best compact mast you could get. It. Uh, I took this on a, a several different plane trips and put it in my carry-on bag and never had a problem with it. I took this one. When my wife and I flew to Alaska earlier this summer, I wanted to try to activate a park up there. I tried twice and, and failed both times, but different story for a different day. But this I had in my checked bag, or in my uh, carry-on bag. We don't check bags. We hardly ever, ever check bags. About the only time I'll check a bag is if I'm going to like a de-expedition or some ham radio event or something. But I had this in my bag and TSA pulled out. Going there, going to Alaska, they didn't say anything. Coming home, they pulled it out of my bag and they're like, what is this? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, um, rather than explaining that, I'm thinking this in my head, rather than explaining to them what this is, I said, it's a fishing rod. And they're like, oh, okay. And he opened it up and he looked at the end of it. He's like, oh, okay. Made sure there weren't any knives in it, I guess. I don't know. But I said, it's a fishing rod. So if you get this and you take either one of these on an airplane and TSA asks you what it is, say it's a fishing rod. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Now, these were available at Hemvention in 2024, in May of 2024, and they sold, they only had brought like 25 or so of them to Gigaparts Mix, the Explorer Mast. They only brought about 25 of these. They all sold out. Most of them were purchased by the YouTube crew. 
those of us who are there making videos. But they will have a whole slew of these at Huntsville Ham Fest. This video will post a few days before the Huntsville Ham Fest. So these will be at the Huntsville Ham Fest. And something else you're gonna wanna look for at the Huntsville Ham Fest is that is LDG Electronics. This video you're watching right now is sponsored by LDG Electronics. There would be a 20% off sale off of everything LDG related at the Huntsville Ham Fest. So stop by the Gigaparts booth, ask them about their LDG sale. Tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you and ask them about these masks. Cause I think they have two or 300 of these coming in at the time of the Ham Fest. If you don't make it to the Ham Fest, I will put a link to this mast in the description of the video below. And since this was Mike's brainchild, you can use the code of K8MRD and I think it saves you 5%. It might be 10%. It's either a 5 or a 10% discount with the uh, coupon code of K8MRD off of the Explorer Carbon Fiber Mast, which not to be confused with the Carbon 6 Mast, I just called them kind of both the same thing. But these are two great masts for portable work, putting in a backpack, taking on an airplane if you're doing that sort of thing, or just getting the lightest weight mass that you can if you're putting everything in a backpack and hiking up a mountain. I have used this one several times with my Ed Fong dual band antenna, and I keep it with my Tech Prepper uh, man pack that has my Yezu FTM 6000 dual band radio in, and I will have this set up on Montesano during the Huntsville Ham Fest during that show. A lot of activity on 146.52 in the Huntsville, Alabama area and I plan to use this mask to hang up my antenna for it. There goes the cicadas again. So check out the link in the description below. Hope to see you at the Huntsville Hamfest 73, guys. Thanks for watching today. Everyone, have a good weekend.